Well, I finally have a sample of the Windows recovery malware that's out there. So I want to show you how to quickly get rid of it and also restore your icons with the little known feature of D7. Um, you can see the Windows recovery junk here has given me the black background. What you can't see is I'm trying to right click on the desktop and it, it's enacted a policy setting that won't allow me to do that. Um, you'll also note that it's uh, moved all of my uh, shortcuts to the SM temp folder in the um, uh, temp directory for the current user. Uh, so all of the, the um, uh, all users desktop, the um, current user, um, all user and current user start menu, I believe, and the um, quick launch items are moved to that temp directory in addition to hiding all of your files on the volume. But let's go ahead and get started. I actually have D7 on the desktop and um, uh, normally I would just pop in a flash drive and double click on it but we'll just go ahead and start D7 with the command prompt since it's already on the desktop and I will skip the update check for now alright the first thing I'm gonna do is use kill them all and uh, kill them all is going to plow through what's unnecessary on the system um, in fact you can see it's already found um, two uh, pieces of malware that that encompass this uh, this this malware package and I can go ahead and delete them now but I'll show you um, well I, I, I'm gonna delete them actually in malware scan because that will also take care of the registry entries that start them up so um, we'll just leave them from and kill them all for now um, at this point the virus is completely neutralized the uh, icons and the tray are gone and um, what I'm gonna do from here is go ahead and start restoring the um, icons. The first thing I want to do is find move shortcuts and what that does is it gives you a prompt. It appears malware has moved some of the start menu desktop quick launch items to the temp directory. Return them? Yes. Done. Click OK to delete the temp folders or cancel to explore them. I left the cancel button there um, just in case you don't trust D7, but I do. I coded it, so I'm going to click OK. Um, and the next thing I want to do is do the reset hidden volume. What that's going to do is unhide all of the files on this partition. Um, so everything should be visible in just a moment. Uh, in the meantime, let's see if we're, yep, we're already back in action with our start menu items are already put back into place. Um, next uh, uh, item up for business is I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the uh, malware. And I believe it's just simple. Well, here's one in the run key. There's that same Microsoft Corporation sign true my nuts. Um, I wonder if it'll pass sysinternals check. Unsigned. Unsigned. Well, that's why that true appears in red. I Let's go ahead and just delete that. Yeah, we'll delete the associated files. Um, as I recall, I don't believe this virus adds anything to pretty much any any other area of the registry. It does not. I do have my host file, which is uh, mutilated. We'll just go ahead and overwrite with default host file. Bam. Done. No scheduled tasks, nothing in the startup folders. Now here's that second malicious file. Um, the uh, uh, out of place file scan essentially looks for files in the application data directories, um, program data directory, and a few other spots that aren't that are executable files but aren't in subdirectories because that's where malware likes to hide. So that's where I have D7 look for it. Up oh, here's a piece in the temp directory as well. Get rid of that guy. 
double check the windows and okay there's the hosts dot rename that's what d7 does when you overwrite the host file with default it renames the original just in case you were to make a mistake we're all clean here um, might as well show you this foolish event log message helper dot dll that is um, and should be in my whitelist and, and will be in my whitelist now. That actually is uh, a file planted by D7. It just helps with event log uh, entries that D7 creates. Um, no big deal there. We don't have, yeah, this, this virus doesn't do anything with junctions. So um, we've removed the virus, we've restored the desktop shortcuts, but I still can't right click on that desktop. So what you want to do is remove policies that's going to restart explore um, shell after you remove the policies and now I can right click um, there's one more thing you can do and that's actually on the maintenance tab um, after you remove malware like this you have little shortcuts uh, remaining that actually point to nothing um, you can see the item refers to has been changed or moved. Um, they point to nothing. Um, if if you've got a heavily infected system and you've got a dozen of these things, and uh, the customer happens to have um, eight. 80 desktop icons and you don't want to squint and sort through all of them you can use this function here on the maintenance tab it's check desktop and start menu shortcuts when you click on that guy it's going to pull up all of the start menu and desktop shortcuts that point that are broken essentially and point to no target um, where the target doesn't exist anymore. You can look through the list and make sure um, sometimes uh, map drives and, and other things make this little routine prone to false positives so you do want to look in the list and make sure you're not deleting something that actually is there. But um, I happen to know that Windows XP recovery link, the uninstall link, and the link in the start menu is not there so we'll go ahead and just delete all and you'll see that disappear right before your eyes. Um, now that I can right click on the desktop, I can restore my desktop background and voila, you have just made yourself some money as a PC technician. You've cleaned a system, you've restored the desktop icons, the start menu icons, everything else is back where it should be. And uh, that pretty much concludes this video. If uh, you do have any malware you'd like to see D7 remove and you want to see it on YouTube, um, shoot it to me. Just uh, prefer that you protect it in 7-zip format and uh, password protect it. Maybe even rename the extension of the executable because what I don't want is my email client rejecting the software because it knows what's inside. So um, email that to foolishtech at foolishit.com. In any case, I hope you've enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.